Bitcoin is a product of the Great Recession, a way to circumvent financial institutions and governments and transact directly with people all over the world. But now, the underlying technology that made the cryptocurrency possible, blockchain, is being used by the very same institutions it was meant to disrupt. Bitcoin is an anti-establishment currency. The motivations of the people who put it out there were heavily libertarian, very much against the old financial order and viewing banks as the enemy and trying to restore power to an individual in a society where they increasingly seem to be voiceless. Bitcoin's libertarian appeal is enabled by a technology called blockchain. Blockchain is an accounting innovation that eliminates institutional middlemen and their fees from transactions by transferring bookkeeping responsibilities from a central authority, like banks, to an open peer-to-peer -peer network. Proponents say it's faster, cheaper, and more secure, and has the potential to upend the financial industry. If you consider what happened to the music industry when iTunes and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing came in, you may remember record stores. That's how banks sort of look at their position right now. But banks aren't waiting for blockchain technology to put them out of business. Instead, they're trying to use the technology for their own purposes. Accounting firm Accenture estimates that blockchain technology can reduce big bank infrastructure by 30%, or eight to $12 billion annually. That's one reason why financial institutions are pouring so much money into developing blockchains, more than 1.4 billion last year. But the blockchains corporations are building are closed. That means they control who can access the system and they can even make edits. That's completely different from Bitcoin's blockchain. But Adam Ludwin, who's developing blockchain technology for companies like Nasdaq, Citigroup, and Visa, makes no apologies for borrowing from Bitcoin. If anyone is disappointed in the fact that so-called mainstream organizations are adopting this technology, I think it's basically sour grapes over maybe the lack of immediate world-changing impact of new cryptocurrencies. Ludwin argues that you want your financial institutions to have secure, closed-off networks that play nice with government regulators, even if that is antithetical to the original mission of early blockchain advocates. You may in the long run have blockchains becoming very powerful tools of government, and this would be exactly the opposite of what the creators of Bitcoin probably had in mind. And that's one of the major challenges that innovators face. You can introduce a new technology, but you can't necessarily control how it evolves.